Hello, this is Bradley Augustine from Hollander and Loan, and we're going to be continuing today our topic in our resident series uh, regarding financial issues that we see a lot of our resident physicians encountering on a regular basis. So today we're going to be talking about student loan repayment. Uh, we get a lot of questions about student loans. Within student loans, there's basically two different types of student loans. There's private student loans and federal student loans or public student loans. Uh, let's briefly talk about private student loans before we dig into the, the bulk of what we see, which is the federal or public student loans. When we talk about private student loans, you usually have those for two reasons. One is that you studied internationally for a piece of your education and therefore had to get private loans to do so, or you're an international student that was studying in the United States and therefore had to get private loan, public loans, private loans, excuse me, to do so. When it comes to these loans, uh, there are two characteristics. Uh, one is that oftentimes you have to have a cosigner, and then the second one is that the interest rates are generally quite high. When we talk about a cosigner, what that means if there was something to happen to you or you defaulted, that cosigner would be on the hook to make those payments for you. If we decided not to change the original loan in any way, shape, or form, oftentimes what we encourage these people to do is to get uh, a small life insurance policy so that if something did happen to them, uh, that life insurance would be able to cover the cost of those loans. The second thing is those high interest rates. Uh, you are able to refinance private loans with other private loans. And generally speaking, when you're completed with your training, that's the best time to do it because you either have a contract in hand or a few pay stubs that you'd be able to use as proof of income, and you can usually cut your interest rate fairly significantly using either SoFi or Laurel Road or, or similar programs. On the public side, this is the one we get the bulk of our questions regarding because it's the one where most people have uh, the bulk of their loans. Uh, when you talk about uh, federal loans, there's a number of different kinds, Stafford, uh, Parent Plus, subsidized, unsubsidized, we're going to take that point of discussion off of the table for this and, and kind of keep it high level and simple. When it comes to repayment, you have a number of different options in how you can repay those loans. Uh, the standard repayment option is a 10-year standard repayment, so it basically just takes your total loan, amortizes it over to a 10-year period, and then has you pay monthly amounts into it. Uh, those monthly amounts will never change. At the end of 10 years, as long as you made all your payments, your debt is gone. That tends to be a really high payment, as you can imagine, and one of the higher payment options of all of them. The other major option that people take is the income-based repayment. Income-based repayment, or pay-as-you-earn, takes the amount that you're making, uh, uses a calculation based on your state's poverty line and the amount of discretionary income that they calculate you have beyond that to figure out what your monthly payment should be. Generally speaking, if you have large amounts of debt, which most of our physician clients do, this is going to be a significantly smaller number than your 10-year repayment option. Taking income-based and pay as you earn out of the equation for a moment, you are also able to take those standard repayment options and extend them out up to 25 years, uh, also lowering your payments, or you're able to do what's called a graded premium, where they start, or graded payment, where it starts low and goes higher all the way through your uh, 10, 25 year, whatever it is. When you're doing it that way, the thing you have to remember is that they're going to go up every year. So if your income isn't significantly expected to increase over the next 10 to 25 years, this could put you in a world of hurt eventually, especially because you're not paying off as much interest at the beginning. The question we're most certainly getting the greatest number of these days is regarding public service loan forgiveness. And public service loan forgiveness has been a hot topic over the last 10 years when the program was initially introduced. What it basically said is at a certain point in the future, which happened to be 2019, if you had stored up enough credits over that 10 year period of public service that you would be eligible to have total loan forgiveness with no tax ramifications. This was a huge deal um, because all you had to do is make those regular payments and then as long as you made those payments in a qualifying way, qualifying way, then you would have the total loan forgiven, which usually uh, was a pretty significant number when you did the calculations. This year, as many of you already know, there have been tens of thousands of applications with fewer than 1,000 uh, requests approved so far. Uh, this was, I wouldn't say not expected, but uh, with any sort of federal government rollout of something like this, you expect a few speed bumps. 
uh, but this was certainly more uh, of a block than most people were anticipating. Uh, what we've bumped into a lot of times is that there wasn't proper paperwork filed uh, by the individual or the loan servicing company. So what we always recommend people do is talk to their loan service provider, be that Navian, Fed Loan Servicing, etc., and tell them from the onset, what I'm looking to do is public service loan forgiveness. What do you require from us in order to get that done? My experience has actually been really good with these companies. They tend to have a really solid system and have all of the answers pretty quick at hand when you call in. Sure, it takes a little while sometimes to make the phone call, but if you make that phone call once a year and make sure that everything is uh, in line and all your ducks are in a row, you're talking about hundreds of thousands of dollars of potential savings by just having it done properly. That, however, st still may not be the way to fix all of your problems. And so uh, what we do also always have to have in the back of our mind is when we're making these public service loan forgiveness uh, payments, we need to be saving money on the side in the event that it does not go through. When these plans were originally designed, they were designed for people in mind of very low income that had high debt numbers, think teachers, social workers, etc. They weren't designed for physicians and dentists. And so there's a, always that thought in the back of everybody's minds that they might take this away for people above a certain level of income, which would knock out most of our clients. So it is good to have a backup plan. For more information on what that backup plan would look like, or more information on federal student loans or private student loans, always feel free to reach out.